Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and we've got another unboxing. This is something I ordered almost a year ago, the Steam Deck, and mine finally arrived. Now I went with the 512 gigabyte version, which has the nice etched display on it. And this was uh, ordered on day one, but I got tied up in all of the order processing issues they had, and I ended up at the back of the line. Uh, so we are going to unbox mine today, months after every other YouTuber has done it. But I figured, hey, it's going to be new to me, and some of you don't have one yet, and probably are curious as to how it functions. So we're going to unbox this, and then later we'll have some more content on it. But I'd love to hear from you what you'd like to see, because this thing has been covered to death on YouTube from everybody else that got theirs ahead of mine. So if there's something that hasn't been covered out there, I'd love to hear about it. Now, this has a carrying case that it comes with. I was very pleased to see that. And it looks like there's a, a little pouch here for something, probably the power supply. And it's you know, one of those soft, hard shell cases, so it feels pretty good. Uh, they do have this uh, locking thing on it. I'm not sure if I have to cut this off or not. Maybe I can squeeze it out of here. Now it looks like I'm gonna have to cut it off. So we're gonna grab my uh, little tin snips here and get this undone. There we go. And now we can unzipper the bag here and see what we've got inside. And there it is. Ooh, it's pretty big. It looks Actually, you know, that etched screen looks really nice on it. And it's not as heavy as I thought it would be. But it, is, it, feels a lot, it looks and feels a lot bigger than I expected, which is not a bad thing. It just is big. Um, so it's probably a little bit larger, I think, perhaps, than the, the Nintendo Switch, accounting for all the extra controls here. Um, but what's interesting is that the D-pad doesn't feel uncomfortable to me on my first impression. I thought maybe having it all the way over to the left here might be an issue, but it actually feels pretty good. And uh, yeah, we'll have to see how this uh, actually plays out in reality here. And here's the back of it. So you have uh, some buttons down here as well. And then on the bottom, you've got a micro SD card slot. And I'm live streaming this right now, and a couple of viewers suggested getting a nice big SD card uh, to run additional games off of it. And then your USB Type-C port is here at the top along with the headphone jack. This is the only I.O. port on the device. So if you hook up some external hard drive to it or something, you'll, you'll need to uh, plug it in uh, with maybe a little docking station or something along those lines. And I'll be testing out all that stuff as well. So it feels pretty good. I'm getting some fingerprints on the screen here already, but it looks pretty nice. It doesn't reflect all that much. This, this is pointed up at my studio lamp. As you can see, it does uh, pretty nice there. It's a little chamois cloth for cleaning it out there, and uh, yeah, that's it. So that is the Steam Deck. We'll set it aside here for a second. And then we will open up this box, which has the power supply. And this, of course, will vary based on your location and region. I'm not sure using these devices is probably the best way to open this, but it's all I've got at the moment here. And we'll see what the power supply looks like. They do say you should plug it in um, before you boot it up. And this looks like your run-of-the-mill USB Type-C power supply. All right, so we got it booted up. I had to put in my Wi-Fi and log into my Steam account, and then it did an update, of course, and now we are at the home screen. And what I did do was install No Man's Sky here, which will boot up in a second. And then if you go into your Steam button here, you can get access to your whole library. Now, it tells me that 50 of the 267 games that I have on my Steam Deck are great on deck. And these are games that have been kind of certified, I'll go over the top here, are kind of certified to run without issue on the device. Now this is just my library, not the, it's not inclusive of all the other great on deck games. And I think you can search through the uh, Steam library, even on a PC, to see what's great on deck. But one of the issues that I had years ago with the Steam machines that were running the first iteration of Steam OS was that most of my library was inaccessible because unless there was an, a Linux port of the game, it wouldn't run. Uh, they've rectified that here. So if I go to all games, I get my entire 267 game library available to me. But not all of these are going to run well. Um, and when you pick a game, and we'll pick up uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 here, which is towards the bottom of my list. By the way, this is a touch screen too. Um, if I go over to Red Dead Redemption 2, um, this one is not certified, and if I hit install here, it's going to tell me some of the issues I might run into. So they're saying the game is playable, but the launcher might require 
something additional to get things running, and some of the text may be difficult to read, but it's otherwise runnable. So that's something that we can install. I'm going right now off of my Wi-Fi 6 access point, and I found that I was pulling down about 70 megabytes per second, which is a little bit over half a gigabit, although this Wi-Fi 6 access point can go a little bit faster than that. Um, but still, it looks like the Wi-Fi is pretty well tuned. And then, of course, you could plug an Ethernet device into the USB-C port here if you want to get a little faster, especially if you have a gigabit connection or greater. Um, but it looks like we've got ourselves a pretty cool uh, library here to explore. And I've got a lot of learning to do about this new system. But before we go, let me boot up No Man's Sky and see how it runs. All right, well, we got it all booted up here, and I got to say, this runs wonderfully. Now, I just went with whatever settings it was running, running with by default, and on its 1280 by 800 display here, it is running pretty much at a solid 60 frames per second with No Man's Sky. It looks great, and I'm really eager to start playing around with some other games here, but this is an awesome way to play this game, and the controls feel really good so far. We'll have to see how this feels in the hand after a longer period of time and how the battery does over that stretch as well. But it's running really, really nice here. And I found a lot of the AMD-based mini PCs that I've looked at tend to struggle keeping up this frame rate, especially on the planet uh, in No Man's Sky or on a planet because there's so many of them. But it does uh, appear to be running great. And it's kind of fun to get this level of PC performance out of a handheld. So I've got a lot more to explore on this. I will say I really like the etched display that comes on the 512 gigabyte unit. It's not very reflective as you can see here. It looks good at different angles and I'm really eager to see how this looks at night. Um, but so far I am very, very pleased with just the overall look and feel and the initial game performance. But we've got a lot more on this one coming up, so stay tuned for that. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Brian Parker, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Baby Metal Fox God, Tom Albrecht, Amda Brown, Matt Zagaya, and Tech Time with Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv support to learn more. Don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.